Multithreading in Node.js is amazing. And actually, one of my most popular videos on this channel is about worker threads, which in fact help you do that. Now, one of the interesting things is that sometimes you share critical resources across those threads, and there are some cases when you might run into race conditions and create bugs. Well, in this video, we're gonna learn all about that and how to avoid them with a feature called Atomics in JavaScript. If you're ready, buckle up and let's get started right now. All right, friends, so the code that we're gonna be looking at today is actually very simple, but tricky at the same time. So we're gonna be working with worker threads and I have a dedicated video on this, but long story short, we use worker threads when we want to offload some of the heavy computation from our main thread into one of these guys in order to keep our application smooth and running and response. Okay, this is the gist of it. But what is happening in this file? So what is happening when I run node index.js? So we're gonna first stumble upon this if statement and we're gonna check if we are on the main thread, meaning if this is how we started the application. This is where we get in first. In the main thread, we're gonna create some buffer and we're going to pass this buffer into the worker, worker one and then worker two. So we're spawning two workers. And then when these workers are spawned, uh, we're basically getting into the second if statement, Y or else statement. The reason is we're passing a, a URL into this worker and usually it's a separate file, but for simplicity, we're doing the main thread code and the worker thread in the same file in the same index.js. But usually you would say like this worker.js, okay? But keep in mind that import meta meta file name is basically the same alien. So what is happening in the else? Now, before we try to understand this, let me explain you something, okay? So in JavaScript, let's say we have two threads. This can be a main thread, this can be a thread two, or this can be a thread one. Let's say, just imagine we have two threads. What is happening when we spawn another thread and try to share data? We can share primitives, right? We can share a string, we can share a number, or we can send a big object and the thread two processes it and then sends it back. This is all good. But what is happening if we want to work with WebGL? You know, it's a different technology that works with graphics or WebAssembly in order to be even faster. So WebAssembly and WebGL sometimes requires a low level access to a memory that's on the RAM, okay? And let's say this memory cell is basically holding some long array that looks like this. Let me make this a bit bigger. So this space in the memory is going to be accessed by our thread one and thread two. And we're no longer going to be sending some values back and forth. What's going to be happening is we define a variable here. Okay, let's say this variable is going to be accessing this place in the memory. So we're going to be working with this. And in order to be faster, let's say we're processing some graphics, we will spawn a second thread and we want this thread to have access to this too. Now there's a concept in JavaScript called array buffer, basically an array, but it's a generic row binary data buffer. This is a keyword, row binary data, meaning you can pass along a row binary data, like a lot of zeros, a lot of ones, and basically low level stuff. Now, when we try to pass this value to a second thread and create a variable here, what's gonna happen is this array buffer is going to get basically detached on thread one. Even if you're gonna have access to it, you're gonna get all the values to thread two and can work here. Um, thread one is no longer going to have access to this data. So you kinda lose it, even though this is called a transferable. Okay, now we have a better way of working with this, which is called shared array buffer. Okay, shared array buffer is exactly what we're using here. And when I give a one inside it like this, it means that I allo allocate one byte in this array. So this is not the length, but this is basically one byte. And we're gonna talk about this, why this is gonna cause a race condition here, okay? So going back to our example, now thread one, because we're using a shared buffer, array buffer, like this guy, okay? So shared array buffer is also going to be pretty cool. And as soon as I scroll down, you can see that we're work working with WebGL rendering context. We are talking about uh, APIs. We're talking about WebAssembly. So as I told you, it's, it's very low level stuff. 
But what's going to happen here is that now thread two also has access to this same memory because we're using a shared array buffer. And when you do the shared array buffer, thread one, thre thread one still can work with it. But okay, now we're much faster. Okay, we can manipulate the memory from two different threads. Great. But with this, we actually introduce another issue which is manipulating the memory from two different threads can lead to very easy race conditions. Now let me demonstrate that in the code. So as soon as we end up in one of the worker codes, we're going to create a new integer eight array, we're going to talk about this too. And we're also going to assign a thread ID. So thread ID is coming natively from node. So we're going to be one of them. So this one's going to be thread ID one, this one is going to be thread ID two, and we're going to manipulate the first index of this typed array and log it out. So let's see what's happening. So thread ID two, which this is the second worker, it has value two, as it should thread ID one has value one. But if I run it multiple times, sometimes we're going to see some anomalies here. So let me run it multiple times until I stumble upon an anomaly, 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 gosh, yeah, and here's the anomaly. Thread ID one, for some reason didn't have value one, but value two, and thread ID two also had value two. Now what is happening here, but since we're already talking about bugs and a potential race condition in our code, I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor of this video, Squish, which is an excellent tool for functional GUI test automation. What is cool about Squish, you may ask? Well, Squish provides an efficient and agile automated GUI testing with multi toolkit applications. It has a ton of powerful features that can tackle any testing challenges you might have. But some that I found the most beneficial are, for example, recording and playback. You can record, edit and execute tests with Squish without a steep learning curve. It's very intuitive. The tool also offers extensive integration options. It's fully compatible with CI CD systems and version control, streamlining your workflow for rapid deployment. Another example for its versatility is that it's available in whichever scripting language you use. And it's especially good at testing applications on multiple different platforms. Whether you're working with Java, Windows or anything else, Squish has you covered with powerful property based support. There are a lot of materials on Squish online, but I'd actually recommend trying out this interactive tour so you can see firsthand how it exactly works. You really get a good general idea and feel of the tool. If you want to support my channel, then make sure to check out today's sponsor. You will find the link to the tour in the video description below. So go try it out and let me know what you think. And now back to the video. All right, so how exactly do we fight this issue where we get two values? Or actually, let's first understand why this is even happening. Now, when the worker one spawns, okay, this is getting spawned and we come here. And before we even try to modify this thread array, the second worker spawns. And the second worker is going to have thread ID two. So it basically modifies the shared array buffer before we try to modify the first one. Okay, so imagine we're the second thread or second worker, we try to we modify this now the typed array, which is referencing this buffer by reference, you know, in JavaScript, you can access objects by reference or by value and objects and arrays are usually by reference. So it's going to be modified and going to be passed to worker one. And this is why we get this weird issue. And how do we fight this? Okay, to fight this, let's understand what is happening. But first, I want to give a shout out to Pavel Romanov as well for actually this piece of code and explanation. Now, let's first understand um, the typed arrays. Okay, typed arrays are something cool. Typed arrays are used in, as I said, canvas, WebGL, and so on. But this guy, array buffer, is the lowest building block of buffered arrays. What does it mean? You can create type or array buffers like this, like we did previously, um, but you can actually not modify it. All right, this is how you're all allocating eight bytes, but you can't modify this buffer. It's pretty stupid. And it's the same story with the shared array buffer, you can't modify these things, what you can do instead is create a data view, you create a data view from this buffer, and then you can actually modify it. So you can say set, you can have a getter, and so on. And this is the index that we're passing, all right, or you can have a typed array. 
basically allows you to manipulate this buffer again. But now we have many options to choose from. So for example, we can have an integer 32, we can have unsigned integer basically has more values than you I unsigned integer that eight that has up to 255 values, and we can have floats and pick and end you get the idea. So what we can do with these guys is basically a similar story. Now these are modifiable. And this is what you usually use when working with low level code and need access to the memory, okay, because we're working with bytes here allocating bikes around. Now, to actually overcome this issue, we need to use a thing called uh, atomics. So atomics exists in many languages like Python, I believe, and C++, but atomics are going to let you modify the value that is a, an array buffer. On, it only works with shared array buffers and array buffers, interestingly, and it kind of locks the value. It locks the value until it's finished modifying so that you don't get these race conditions. So what's going to happen here is that we're going to store this array in an atomic, we're going to use the index zero, and we're going to assign a new value. And this atomics.store basically returns a new value here, we're going to get the value, and we can later log this value here like this. Okay, but just looking into atomics, atomics also has different properties. For example, you can add something, you can do comparison, you can exchange. Also, another interesting one is lock free, we also have wait verifies that the specified index of the rest still contains a value and sleeps awaiting or times out basically very powerful stuff to avoid race conditions when working with array buffers. And now if we run this code, I save it and run it, we're always going to get a same consistent answer because while the worker one is modifying this shared array buffer, or better shown here, while thread one is modifying this, we're going to lock this guy, we're going to lock this guy and any modifications from thread two are basically not going to go through. How cool is that? I hope you learned something interesting today. And if you did smash like and subscribe for more interesting videos on Node.js like this in the future, and I'm going to see you in the next one. Goodbye.